hello and welcome to Kubicon. Uh, next, we are going to share uh, how to use cloud native service technology uh, in, in the autonomous driving industry. Uh, I'm Benjamin Ho, and uh, together with me is Xiu Ming Lu from UC. I'm the uh, senior architect of uh, Kubesphere. I'm the, uh, also the creator of Open Function. Uh, Xiu Ming is uh, from UC uh, and the uh, architecture of uh, the uh, autonomous driving uh, cloud platform. Uh, here is the agenda. Uh, Open Function is a, a cloud native fast platform. So the question is why we build a, a, such a platform in the first place and how to build it. So following that, there will be uh, open functions introduction, including several components and the early adopters, contributors, the use map and a few demo. Uh, in, in the end, assuming we will uh, introducing how they use open function uh, in uh, autonomous driving. Okay. So uh, why we need an open source kind of native fast platform uh, in the first place? Uh, I think in the uh, recent years, we have heard uh, multi-cloud, uh, distributed cloud, or hybrid cloud more often than ever. I think it is because uh, Kubernetes bring the uh, possibility of uh, cloud agnostic, right? But uh, as for the uh, fast or service uh, area, it's difficult to be uh, cloud uh, agnostic because each cloud provider has its own fast platform. And uh, usually these platforms are tightly coupled with uh, each cloud provider's backend services. So it's difficult to, uh, to be uh, uh, move one cloud from another, uh, move from uh, one cloud to another cloud uh, for the uh, service part. So uh, it is possible to build a cloud, a cloud native uh, and cloud agnostic fast platform. I think the answer is yes, because the new progress of uh, cloud native uh, service technologies uh, make this possible. I think the uh, most famous uh, technology uh, in this area is uh, key native. But today I want to talk uh, talk about another two technology that is Dapper and Kada. Uh, Kada is a great product to uh, uh, auto scale uh, applications on Kubernetes. Uh, based on the uh, different metrics uh, of uh, different even sources. So we can use diaper, uh, we can use Akeda to decouple the auto scaling uh, of application uh, with uh, many, many uh, different uh, even sources, including the uh, open source even sources or the cloud providers even sources, right? So this is Akeda. Um, we can also use Stepper to decouple the uh, distributed application with the underlying backend services. Uh, for example, we can use Stepper's uh, PubSub building block to uh, decouple uh, the uh, of events and the sub of events from the underlying uh, massive brokers, right? So user can use uh, open source uh, message broker such as uh, Kafka or not streaming, or they can also uh, use the uh, message broker from uh, cloud providers such as uh, UCP PubSub or Azure uh, Bus. So uh, usually for a fast platform, uh, a fast platform should support several languages and they need to communicate with uh, many, many uh, different kinds of backend services. So suppose a fast platform uh, need to support five languages and they need to communicate with 10 message queues. And without Dapper, uh, each language has to uh, uh, use different SDKs to uh, uh, communicate with uh, different message queues. So this ends up with uh, 50 uh, implementations actually. But uh, with Dapper, uh, each language only need to use Dapper SDK to talk to Dapper and therefore handle the REST communication with uh, other uh, message queues. So uh, we only need to, uh, uh, we only need uh, five implementations in this uh, with Dapper. So uh, it has greatly uh, reduced the complexity of a uh, fast platform. 
So it's like uh, adding a uh, additional layer between the bus and the uh, backend services. So that per uh, acting like a unified interface uh, for the uh, backend services. Actually, uh, a couple of weeks ago, we have uh, shared uh, how we are uh, how we are using uh, Dapper in Open Function with Dapper community, and the two co-founder of Dapper, uh, Mark and Yaron, they are very glad to see the integration of Dapper of uh, service function runtime like Open Function. So, um, uh, finally, um, what is Open Function? Actually, there are several uh, three components uh, under the uh, function umbrella. Uh, the first is uh, build. Uh, now, uh, Open Function supports using uh, build packs, cloud native build packs, to build function source code into container images. And the other three uh, Docker file uh, relevant build technology uh, are, can be used to build applications. Uh, for now, uh, maybe uh, we can also use them to build functions. In the future, and the serving part, um, the serving is the most com uh, most important uh, part uh, in Open Function. Uh, now we support uh, async runtime and sync runtime. Uh, for sync runtime, uh, we currently support using uh, Gnative as sync runtime, and we are planning to uh, support Keda HTTP as another sync runtime. Uh, actually, we have. Uh, actually, we have uh, maintainers uh, is contributing to uh, Kida HTTP project. Uh, I think the most uh, unique or differentiating uh, feature of Open Function is uh, the uh, async runtime is powered by Dapper and Kida. Um, I will explain in more details later. Uh, the last component is uh, Open Function events. It's uh, it's kind of like Kinetic uh, eventing, but uh, uh, Actually, it, it is uh, inspired by uh, Argo events uh, with some difference. Uh, difference. Uh, I will explain later. So open function build. Uh, whenever a function is created, it will create a builder, and the builder will uh, will create a shipwright build and build run. Together with the uh, build strategy, uh, shipwright will create a tecton task run. And the, Build steps are, are created in the uh, task run and executed uh, in order. Uh, and this is how the function source code is built into a container images. Uh, the serving path, uh, as I said, uh, open function uh, can support open, uh, the uh, Kinetic sync runtime and the open function async runtime. Uh, the, uh, both the sync runtime and the async runtime uh, can use Dapper. And the difference is uh, for sync runtime, uh, we only use the uh, output ability of Dapper component uh, and because the input is from the ATP. And for the async runtime, we use, uh, we, we use uh, the, uh, both the ability of input and the output uh, from uh, the Dapper uh, component. And uh, Kida is used to auto scale the uh, function instance. Uh, in the future, we are going to support uh, uh, Kida IDP as another sync runtime. And uh, to speed up the code start, we are also considering uh, using a pod pool method uh, as another runtime. Uh, whenever a function needs to be created, it, it will uh, take a uh, already an existing existing pod in the pool to start the function instance. So uh, this way the uh, code start will be uh, very fast. So this is the open function serving. Um, the open function events, uh, it is inspired by Argo events, but uh, the difference is uh, the event bus in open function events uh, is decoupled with the underlying uh, message broker. Uh, by uh, using Dapper pops up a uh, uh, building block. So user can use Kafka not streaming or any cloud providers uh, message queue such as GCP pops up or Azure event bus. Uh, whenever uh, events arrive in the uh, event sources, uh, the event source can uh, call uh, sync function directly or write the events uh, back to the uh, event bus. 
whenever the uh, events are written to the event box, it can trigger a async function directly, or user can define a trigger to filter the events they are interested and trigger a single function or write the filtered events back into the event bus. So uh, this is even open function events. And another uh, important uh, component is uh, the function framework. Um, the function framework, uh, actually, uh, this is inspired by a Google Cloud function, and we have added the, uh, our own function signature here. Uh, both the sync function and the async function can use the same uh, function signature to define their functions. Uh, there are several components here. You can see uh, the context, the plugin, uh, the runtime, and the framework. Uh, the framework, of course, will read the function context and uh, register the uh, plugins and start the, uh, create the uh, run, uh, function runtime. And finally, it will start the function runtime. Uh, whenever a sync function or async function is triggered, uh, the framework will first uh, execute the function free hook and call the user functions and execute the uh, post hooks and finally uh, process the function uh, output. Uh, we add, uh, you can find more details uh, in the links below about the proposal and how uh, the function implementations. Um, we add the uh, plugin mechanism here because uh, we want to support uh, function tracing. Uh, function tracing, uh, function performance is uh, important to uh, uh, to uh, to a fast platform. So let's take a, a example here. A user uh, send a HTTP request to a sync function, and the sync function uh, will uh, will then publish uh, some messages to the uh, Kafka server via uh, diaper set card. And whenever a message is published to the Kafka server, um, the uh, async function will be triggered uh, through the uh, diaper set card uh, subscription. So for use case like this, uh, user need to know uh, uh, how 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 long the uh, sync function uh, takes uh, sync function uh, takes and how long the uh, async function takes. So. Uh, we have, uh, in the last couple of months, we have worked with a uh, skywalking uh, community and user can simply add the uh, sky, uh, the tracing like this uh, to the function annotation. You can see that here is the, the provider is skywalking and the OHP server and some tags. Um, of course, uh, you can uh, add this uh, tracing configuration to a config map and uh, that way, uh, uh, the tracing will be applicable, uh, will be uh, can will be valid for all functions uh, instead of one function. So, if you uh, add the tracing configuration to uh, the sync function and async function annotation, you can see a call stack in this skywalking UI like this, and uh, you can also see the tracing data here. Uh, below, um, here is a Skywalking's uh, official site, there, there is a uh, uh, demonstration of the uh, integration here. Uh, here you can see the uh, uh, function score stack and the tracing data here. So um, this is the uh, open function tracing. Uh, early adopters, um, uh, actually, one of the major telecom company in China is using open function to build their uh, fast platform now. And you say is using open function to uh, process our high code data. Um, there will be more details later. And Qianxiang is a local uh, platform and they are using open function to uh, implement its uh, plugin mechanism. And we have also contributors to uh, writing the .NET function frameworks. The roadmap. Uh, next, we are uh, currently we are support the Go function frameworks very well. And next, we are uh, we are working on the 
uh, other languages, no uh, function frameworks, uh, the UC team uh, is contributing to the Node.js and the Python uh, function framework. And we, are, we have also planned to uh, add in the Java and .NET function framework. And a few days ago, we have discussed with Zephyr and Kukas community to uh, the, uh, the Zephyr community will add the uh, Zephyr support to in the uh, Zephyr uh, support to the Kukas uh, environment. Uh, after that, we are going to support uh, running fun Java functions in the Kukas uh, environment. It will be much faster than uh, the ordinary uh, Java function. And also, we are going to support the uh, sync function time uh, KDIDP. And uh, besides the skywalking, we are also planning to add uh, open telemetry as another uh, tracing uh, provider. And also, we are going to support the uh, open function console and so this uh, workflow in the future. So, this is the roadmap. Uh, next, I have two demos. Uh, I, uh, I have two demos here, uh, but for the uh, time reason, I only uh, demonstrated the second demo. Uh, the first demo, I can explain it a little bit. Um, actually, uh, you can use Flumbit to forward the Kubernetes log to Kafka server, and uh, we can define uh, async functions to consume uh, the log from the Kafka server. And whenever the async function uh, find the uh, error, it will send an alert to the uh, Slack. So we can take a look at the uh, function code and definition. So the logic is uh, pretty simple. Uh, whenever the uh, 404 error is found in the demo uh, product name space for port word price, uh, whenever, uh, whenever the uh, this three condition matched, uh, the uh, alert manager alert will be defined and will be sent to the uh, notification manager. And let's see how the function uh, CMO. Uh, this is how uh, a function is defined here. Uh, you can see here is the build stuff here. Uh, using these settings, a user can build the uh, function source code. Uh, into a con container images. And you can see the uh, runtime is async. And also the skill options from Keda. I uh, can see the uh, main uh, replicant or max replicant, the cooldown period. So the, how, how the skill will behave like this. Um, the most important, this is the Keda's trigger, how the function is triggered. Uh, the function will watch for the last topic of this Kafka server. And whenever the consumer lag is over 20, uh, it will increase a replica. It will, yes. Uh, you can see a function has input and output. Uh, the input is uh, from uh, the Kafka's uh, receiver. And this is the Dapper component defined here. Uh, you can see that this is the, the topic that we are watching for and the Kafka server and consumer group, et cetera. Um, the output, whenever the error is found in the uh, function, it will send the output to the uh, uh, notification manager here. Uh, you can see uh, it's just a URL. So this is the first demo. Um, I will now uh, do an actual demo. So let's go directly to the second demo. Uh, this is the tracing example, send a request to a sync function and tracing trigger uh, async function. Let's take a look at the uh, function code. You can see here, uh, it has the same signature uh, context and the uh, payload. We retrieve the payload here. And whenever uh, the, the payload is uh, retrieved from the HTTP request, it will send the uh, payload to the uh, uh, RB. Greeting target. Um, let's take a look at the functions YAML. And this is a sync function, so uh, this is the build part, uh, how the function is built. Uh, the scale options, uh, the, how many uh, min max replica, and the uh, uh, runtime is a uh, kinetic. 
because the input is a, it's a single function, the input is from the ATP, so it only has, uh, has it only defines the output. Uh, the output is uh, a Kafka server, uh, similar to the previous one. The Kafka server is uh, defined as a fiber component here. And uh, this is the uh, Gnative stuff. Uh, so this is the first function. And the async function, uh, you can take a look here. The Kafka input. Here is the async function uh, code. Uh, it has the same signature here. Uh, you retrieve the uh, message from Kafka and just uh, print out uh, the message. So this is the async function. Uh, how the take a look at how the async function is defined. Uh, same at the build stuff and uh, uh, the runtime is the async. Uh, the k does the scale options here. Uh, same. The same and trigger. Uh, it will watch for the uh, simple sample topic here uh, and, uh, from this Kafka server. And uh, uh, this one, uh, the AC function only has uh, input uh, this time. And the input is also a different component defined as, as, as like this. And the output is just uh, the uh, SE out, so it's needed to be defined here. So uh, let's take a look. Have already defined the functions here. You can see here. Uh, this is the sync function. Uh, this is the async function. Uh, you can also take a look at the, the serving. Serving is also up and running, and you can watch for the. Uh, the this is the this is the async function. Uh, this is the sync function. They both scale to zero because there are no payload here. So let's trigger uh, let trigger some payload on the sync function. Uh, you can see here the sync function is starting now. The sync function is starting now. Uh, it's close down and take a few. Uh, uh, the async function always starts now, so we can take a look at it now. Async function is starting now and receive the message finally. So this is uh, this is the demo. Okay. Uh, next, I'm uh, handing over to Xu Ming and uh, Xu Ming. It's your it's yours. Thanks, Ben. And hi, everyone. My name is Xiu Minglu, an architect from UC, and I'm so happy to share a talk in Kubeco. The topic I share today is empower autonomous driving with cloud-native serverless technologies. Uh, next, thanks. In recent years, the autonomous driving field has been growing rapidly and attracting a lot of attention. Cloud-native came to maturity and prosperity in the same period. It is natural for these two fields to join forces and explore a route for cloud native to empower autonomous driving. I would like to start my presentation by giving a brief introduction to autonomous driving. Here is a simplified demonstration of autonomous driving interaction, where users apply for a car from the app, take a car to the destination, and finally get off. In this classic and simple process, from the user's point of view, it involves vehicle monitoring and commands dispatching within authority framework. From the perspective of the vehicle, it involves a series of AI technologies, such as environmental perception, pedestrian avoidance, route planning, traces control, multi-vehicle cooperation, and so on. And in the cloud, we need to ensure high availability, error traceability, scalability, security for our services and middleware. Next, we will start from the specific, a specific perspective of cloud agnostic FAST to explain why autonomous driving needs cloud agnostic fast pl platform. First of all, cloud agnostic. One of the core technologies of autonomous driving is artificial intelligence algorithms and the rely reliance on data for algorithm enhancement and improvement is so high that the data has a high value and customers are often reluctant to put data in the public cloud and instead use their own set of private cloud clusters. In addition, the blossoming cloud providers and the infrastructure choices bring challenges to the upper layer of develop development. 
A cloud agnostic platform can make development smoother and save significant cost costs in the face of different customer owned server environments and constrained vendors. The second, fast. An autonomous driving vehicle is essentially an extremely complex IoT device with numerous types of sensors and suppliers, resulting in the need for multiple passing scripts and extremely large number of processing modules handled by multiple development teams, leading to the introduction of different libraries and even different programming languages. This poses obstacles where modules need to be merged and refactored at a later stage. In addition, the amount of autonomous driving data is far beyond the reach of traditional IT, IoT devices, and the streaming analysis of large amounts of data requires a tool that has great scalability. Finally, the rapid development of, of autonomous driving also means that the logic of data processing changes frequent, frequently based on rapid changing industry requirements. Different weather, size, and business models require different processing logic, and we expect to find a fast blade way to replace the computational logic at a small granularity. Instead of modifying one line of code and requesting time to produce a full CICD for the entire service, which always takes a day. In conclusion, we expect to have an open source fast platform based on cloud native technologies for us to quickly get the solution off the ground, to have control over the platform itself, and to enjoy the convenience of cloud native technologies. At this point, Open Function came into our view and introduced DARPA and KIDA as part of its foundation into the consideration. Next, we will talk about why KIDA matters. Automatic scaling is an efficient allocation strategy for resources often acts in, acting in scenarios where data traffic is erratic, which is exactly what autonomous driving needs. Autonomous driving can also be understood as an AI driver who replaces or re assists the human drivers to do the job. And thus, to some extent, it retains the work habits of the human drivers, resulting in a potentially significant peak and valley effect on traffic. In the dialog on the bottom right, we can see we have arranged different work patterns for the driverless vehicle according to an eight hour workday. In some scenarios, the driving taxi is only one part of the customer's business. So there's no need for the vehicle to work 24 hours every day. In other scenarios, the vehicle needs to work 24 seven to maximize its capability. This brings significant traffic differences. Autonomous driving sensors tend to maintain a high frame rate of data acquisition for safety and later like sensors generate a large number of data. So a small change in the number of vehicles can also bring out a significant swing in data traffic. And next, we will talk about why DAPR matters. We have already mentioned some of the cross-language requirements due to the many data types and processing modules. As seen in the sketch in the lower right, we where well, the data passes through many modules in the car to cloud link. And as we talk about the next, DAPR is also very attractive for decoupling. On one hand, the choice of middleware is often limited by the customers. And on the other hand, with microservice architecture, the code of establishing connections with mid middleware, handling errors, adapting to different patterns is written over and over again. Dapper's binding can solve this problem by abstracting into a unified specification. Shadow devices are an abstraction of physical devices in the cloud, and the code often uses shadow instances to complete the monitoring and control of the actual devices. And generally, generally uses an asynchronized architecture to, hand, to handle side effects for performance reasons. And the DAPR's pub sub wrapper can also cover these usage scenarios. Uh, next, here is an example of uh, next, please. Here is an example of using open function to solve a real world problem in the autonomous driving field. Archiving data with open function within a customer's private cloud environment. The functions in the diagram are all serverless functions that we have written and deployed in a cloud native fast plat platform like demo shows. In this 
workflow, the cron job or HTTP requests are received as inputs and then passed to the first function, which splits the task and deliver subtasks to the message broker for driving other functions, which are responsible for handling specific subtext written in different languages. Those functions receive data as input in a byte array form provided by the fast platform. Receive data including context info and the subtask description, and then push a zip package to the S3 service after data collection, data masking, and data compression. And finally, exit it. No need to pay attention to the middleware connection. No need to unify the language. It is convenient for each function to use the most efficient open source library and let programmers finish their job at the minimum level. What is more, when data traffic increases, Kida automatically scales up function instances based on the amount of data in the broker backlog, allowing developers to focus entirely on logic uh, implementation. Uh, at last, we will talk about what is expected from a cloud agnostic fast platform. We would like to have the following features. First, tracing and logging and metrics. New data needs to go through hundreds of modules and a dozen networks communications before it can be archived in the cloud and the errors may occur in any step. Troubleshooting is one of the most important problems in the development of an autonomous driving system. We need to create an unified tracing mechanism within a complex call chain because efficient observability mechanism saves time and money. Robust system, efficient error handling are important aspects of getting autonomous driving on the ground for the safety requirements. The second, plugin mechanism and the package management. This is an important feature to make the platform more powerful and easier to use. The third, alternative underlying technology and easy to use interface wrapper. The former ensures that no upper level development will be nullified due to dependent technology replacement, while the latter ensures the efficiency of upper level development. Last but not the least, active and uh, efficient maintenance team. Currently, the cloud native serverless fast platform is in its early stages and needs a stable and active maintenance team like open function to make the community more prosperous and uh, to make better open source products. That concludes my presentation. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Julian. I think uh, uh, that's all our sharing. So uh, if, you, uh, if you have any questions, you can ask us online. Okay.